today's webinar is on the life-changing benefits of relaxation and namely why we start the practice of meditation with developing the skill of relaxation. Let's begin with a few minutes of practice to fully arrive. We'll practice the two tools that we learned in day one and day two. So find a comfortable seat for yourself wherever you are. Allow yourself to sit back and relax. And become aware now of yourself, turning your attention inward, taking a breath, inhaling, and exhaling, gently letting it go. And taking this time to become aware of your breath. and how you're breathing in this moment. Noticing without judgment the quality of your breath. Notice what happens as you just gently begin to Slow down your exhale. Practicing breath and body awareness to promote relaxation. Now becoming aware of your body and noticing your whole body from the bottoms of your feet all the way up through your physical body. Just gently scanning your whole body to the top of your head. Noticing any places of tension or places of openness. And scanning your body from the top of your head all the way back down through your physical body to the bottoms of your feet. giving yourself permission to fully relax and release all tensions. Take a breath in, inhale, and exhale, gently letting it go and centering your attention in your heart space. and letting there be a focus of aloha, of generosity, and self-compassion, especially as you continue on your 21-day challenge and your personal practice. In closing with the reflection of your intention. What's your intention for your challenge? What would you like to receive? and taking a heart breath and letting it go. Thank you and namaste. For joining me in that 
few minute practice. Considering what is your intention for the Aloha challenge? How does intention help us to meditate? We'll be exploring that question as we move further along. And to really consider what you'd like to receive from your practice. Being open, but also having a focused intention as you develop your daily practice. Most of you know me, but I'd like to introduce myself. My name's Sura. I discovered meditation when I was working in corporate. I was on Wall Street and I was really depressed and in a low place in my life. Um, I discovered meditation and it really saved my life. Um, I ended up leaving New York and traveling to Asia and spending a lot of time in India learning about the ancient teachings of yogic meditation and developing yoga practice. And since then I came back and I started teaching meditation and yoga in Los Angeles. And today we offer online trainings for meditation teachers and coaches, as well as for leaders, for executive teams. Our intention for the challenge today is to offer you the tools and the space for you to develop your own meditation practice a practice that really resonates with you, that you love, that inspires you to meditate every day. I believe that when you have a practice that you connect with deeply, it's easy to wake up and to meditate. And it's about creating that deep, loving connection, the aloha with your own spiritual practice and finding out what really works for you. And also the willingness to show up every day, no matter what, and to show up when it's messy, when it's not perfect, when you don't know what you're doing, um, and to keep showing up because it's that action of showing up that really allows us to benefit long-term from our spiritual practice. So it's not about having the perfect practice or the perfect posture or following even a tradition. It's really about trusting our own experience and trusting ourselves through the practice. And in doing so, receiving a level of clarity even energy in our meditation practice, which helps us to cultivate the aloha spirit, which really embraces that feeling of love, peace, and compassion. We enjoy teaching a softer approach to meditation that is heart-centered, that helps you to really tune into your own inner guidance. In meditation, we can open ourselves up to our higher mind, what some people refer to as divine consciousness. And it's in that space that we can start to receive even more energy, um, tap into our creative life force energy and realize more of our potential and who we really are. Today, anxiety, stress, and depression are at an all-time high, especially in light of everything that's happening. Just to give you some statistics, 
the American Institute of Stress says that 73% of people experiencing stress say that it affects their mental health. 33% of all people in North America experience extreme stress. And 50% of people have trouble sleeping from stress. And today, people are experiencing enormous levels of stress because of the financial uncertainty. That's actually the number one stressor for people that they found in studies is money. And with the uncertainty of everything that's happening with the pandemic, and health concerns and not knowing what's gonna happen in the future. This has only elevated the levels of stress and anxiety that people feel and oftentimes really suffer on their own um, where they don't feel like they have the tools to move themselves out of it. And because of this, it's easy to feel restless and anxious, totally overwhelmed, scattered and diffused. And this is what people are experiencing today is this level of you know, inner chaos, of total restlessness, of running from here to there and not really knowing why you're running around or needing to run around, but that constant need to do prove, perform, produce. And it can be really exhausting when your stress response is constantly turned on and you don't know how to pull it back and let go. So you'll notice that in that state, your breath rate becomes faster. It, your breath is shallow. You have less access to um, information, to your inner guidance or your intuition. But the good news is, is that meditation simultaneously as is at an all time high. Now more than ever, people are really interested in meditation. Almost 20% of people in North America have tried meditation at least once in their lives. And 200 to 500 million people around the world are exploring the practice of meditation. It's now a billion dollar industry and is expected to double by 2022. And meditation is good for us. It's healthy for us to do. It creates calm and focus. It helps us tap into our vitality to have more energy. It gives us inspiration and it also helps boost our immune system by turning on the relaxation response. So it's good for us on all levels, on the emotional level, our mental level, our spiritual health. Um, it's good for our physical health. There are many benefits to meditation and it's a vital practice to promote longevity and long-term health. It can vastly improve um, even how we age. I mean, stress creates faster aging and we can start to slow down that process by tapping into the health benefit of meditation. So if we know that meditation is so good for us, why is it hard sometimes to continue and to just start a meditation practice? So I wanna begin by addressing some meditation myths and blocks, things that can stop us from progressing on the path to self-awareness. The first is that a lot of people think meditation is hard. There's this image of um, you know, being on the mountaintop by yourself, giving up all worldly possessions and having to sit in this perfect posture. And it almost seems unattainable the practice of meditation, just to sit there and to, to do nothing. And people associate meditation with being hard because you need all this discipline, so therefore I can't do it. And it's simply not true. There are ways to access meditation effortlessly. And what we share is through the practice of relaxation by really developing this practice and learning how to enjoy the practice of relaxation. The second 
reason is that people just don't know where to start. And a common question that we receive is what is meditation? Do you have to believe in Buddha? Do you have to believe in or practice yoga? I mean, these are some very basic questions that we receive that are common and they don't even know where to start in developing a meditation practice because there's so many different kinds of practices and so many different directions you can go. It's just very difficult to know where to begin. Um, the third block is the lack of support and not having accountability or self-discipline. Uh, people that are interested in meditation sometimes find that they're alone in that interest and they don't have a tribe of people that they can really talk to or connect to. Uh, maybe even in their own household, there is just a feeling of a lack of support and being able to really develop something like a meditation practice. And they need that guidance. And lastly, there are unconscious beliefs that can stop us from progressing in meditation, like the belief that doing nothing is invaluable. That in order for me to be valued, I have to be constantly doing something. I have to be producing. I have to be useful. And that you know, some people experience a lot of guilt when they're meditating because they begin enjoying just being and sitting there. And who am I to be enjoying all this space or to be relaxing when I haven't achieved something or proven myself or gotten to a certain level? So there are unconscious beliefs or even the unconscious belief that I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough at meditation, so I shouldn't be wasting my time doing it. I can't do it. And these um, beliefs of unworthiness arise as resistance and procrastination. And really what it is, is fear. There is a deep-seated fear because every time we sit to meditate, the ego is looked at, it's confronted, and ultimately there's a mini transformation that happens. Each time you sit, every time you relax, you can feel the softening, the relaxation of the ego. And the ego doesn't like that. It's very fixed. It wants to stay. It wants to keep its grip, its hold. So there is that also that unconscious fear to deal with. When I first started learning meditation, I started with Zen meditation. I bought a book and I taught myself how to meditate from a Zen beginner's book, which said to count your breaths from 10 to one. So I'm sitting in my Brooklyn condo um, with a book, trying to practice how to meditate. And um, this was a really cathartic experience for me. Um, I cried, I think, for the first three months of learning how to meditate. And then I decided that I wanted to take my practice to the next level and go to a Zen meditation retreat. And it was there that um, I received meditation guidance and it was really intense. You know, we were um, silent for seven days. All the meals were vegetarian. I had never had just only a vegetarian diet. Um, so we couldn't talk. We were instructed to wear really plain clothes and no makeup. And we woke up at the crack of dawn and practiced meditation all day and then went to sleep early and lights out, no reading, no journaling, no nothing. It was just meditation all day long from sitting meditation to working meditation to being in the kitchen, kitchen and cutting vegetables. And it was just really this rigor and intensity every hour of the day scheduled. And when I went on to continue my studies, it was like that when I stayed at yoga ashrams, it was just a very intense schedule, morning till night, pretty militaristic and um, disciplined. Uh, and that, with that whole experience, I didn't know anything about meditation. I just trusted what I was being taught in these centers. And it was from there that I realized it took me years, years to really understand the value of relaxation. Because through that experience of just even Zen, I was sitting with so much tension. 
um, I would sit for such long periods of time that my legs would fall asleep. I felt like they were going to fall off. I thought for sure they're going to have to call an ambulance after I get out of my <laughs> meditation pose because I cannot feel anything in my body. And we were instructed not to move, not to move an inch, um, not to scratch, not to, um, you know, if we were in pain, to still not move. And so that was the way I was taught meditation. And uh, I was never really given that explicit instruction to simply relax. And of course, if you're sitting in tension for hours at a time, you are eventually going to surrender because you cannot sustain that pose without letting go. But for so many years, I really you know, tried to hold myself in place and it didn't serve my health or my energy ultimately. I won't go into that now, but that's when I realized the value of relaxation and helping people develop this skill alongside with the practice of meditation and how effective it was in helping people fall in love with their practice and receive the most from their 20 minutes every morning or their 10 minutes every morning. So if you are going to spend that time, it might as well be a really good sitting practice. Yeah. <laughs> so why is relaxation important? Relaxation is so important because we are energy beings and energy runs through our body like a form of electricity, this electric current. And when this current of energy gets blocked, it creates tension and dis-ease as in Chinese medicine or ancient medicine. And when our channels aren't open and flowing and we're meditating and sitting in tension, it can create more tension and more anxiety. So some people actually report saying that when they go to meditate, they become more aware of their chaotic thoughts, more aware of how bad they feel inside and all the bad emotions or feelings. And that's why they don't meditate. That's why people don't sit still is they don't want to feel all of that. Um, and that's what keeps them running from here to there and everywhere and always consuming and engaging is because we, we don't feel comfortable with ourselves and relaxation helps us to get comfortable and to feel settled and eventually from feeling settled to enter stillness which is really the nectar of meditation where we can start to receive that blissful sweet um, it's like a bubbling spring of energy where you just start to feel overflowing your cup is overflowing with a blissful, sweet energy, which is really the universal life force energy. When we have our stress response turned on, it initiates a whole host of negative health experiences like insomnia, anxiety, depression, digestive orders, fatigue, tension and hypertension, um, a lot of us are slightly engaged in the stress response, which is our natural inclination, fight or flight. So I either have to, I'm hyper vigilant because I don't know, you know, what threat is going to happen. And we don't have real threats to our survival for most of us. It's just threats of, you know, people disapproving of us or not liking us or, um, you know, these types of threats where we don't have, um, you know, money coming in, that's, that feels like a threat. And when we are constantly thinking from that place, which we're ingrained to think that way, we're actually have evolved with the stress brain because people that lived in fear and knew how to protect themselves and survive, they were the ones who kept going on because fear was, um, a form of protection. And now we over engage in the fear response, the stress brain. And it turns on that, that feeling, it gets the adrenaline going and the cortisol, and it just throws our body out of whack. It makes us imbalanced. So it's really uh, necessary. Relaxation is for reducing stress-related disorders. 
But more than just reducing stress, meditation can catapult us to a whole new level within ourselves. It can allow us to experience peace and joy, this inner feeling of freedom. And that is the purpose of meditation, is liberation, self-realization, realizing who we are. So meditation and relaxation together can help to initiate the relaxation response. The relaxation response is important because it sends a signal to your brain and your body that it's okay to let go. It's okay now to release the hypervigilance and to relax. So what happens when we initiate the relaxation response? Well, our organs and our muscles begin to relax and open, and that increases blood flow to our brain. So now the body says, okay, it's safe for me to rest. It's safe for me to digest. And when I say digest, it's not just digesting your food. It's learning how to digest life, digest the emotions that we feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And through this process, the body begins to eliminate toxins and just any toxins, emotional toxins, the biggest toxin that we can release is actually through our lungs, just through breathing that helps us to release toxins. And then that allows us to come back to homeostasis, which is our body's way of self-regulating. You know, whatever's happening on the outside, on the inside, we're able to self-regulate at an optimal level and bring ourselves into an internal place of balance on all levels, emotionally, physically, mentally. So there are a lot of benefits to practicing relaxation. It helps us to breathe, just to breathe better. And when we breathe better, we are better. We do everything better when we, we can just breathe and let go. It lowers the heart rate. It boosts our immunity. Uh, when you have a strong relaxation response, you have strong health. You're increasing your longevity. You're slowing down the stress and the aging process. And it helps to release tension. And think of the tension we hold, the deep, deep inner tensions that create emotional tension and mental tension. Any mental tension translates directly into physical tension. And that includes emotional tension. It's really our emotions that are so important in learning how to relax um, is being in touch with how we're feeling. And then this in turn improves our digestion and the quality of our sleep. So when we take time to rest in our mind during the day, it actually improves the quality of rest that we have at night. And relaxation also helps you to not just slow down, but slow down your mind. When you're relaxed, your mind begins to slow down because it tends to follow your breath rate. So anytime you feel your mind chaotic and going really fast, ping-ponging in different directions, Notice your breath because it's reflecting your breath rate and vice versa. So anytime the mind's going and spinning a lot, the breath's gonna be shallow and then vice versa. So when you start to slow down your breath, the thoughts in your mind begin to go from here to slowing down. And then between each thought, there's has more space between each thought form. And it's in that space that we become open and present and we become open to new thought forms, new insights, new realizations through our practice of meditation. So through relaxation, we have the power to change our thoughts and the quality of our thoughts. We have 80,000 thoughts per day, it said, and most of those thoughts are negative and stressful, the majority of them. And again, we're wired to be that way. We've been 
and trained programmed to think more negatively to protect ourselves. But it's through meditation that we can go against the grain of how we've been taught to think, how we've been taught to be, you know, go, 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 do, 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 think, think, think like this. And we begin opening that our brain up to our creative brain, the divine brain. So relaxation also helps to nurture a state of receptivity. And when we're receptive, when we allow ourselves to receive versus give and do and have a constant output, through non-doing, we begin receiving energy. It also opens you up to receiving new information. Your intuition connects you to your creative genius and ways of thinking and being that you might not have gotten in touch with had you been really focused in the stress part of your brain. And it also helps energy to flow through your body. Remember that gentle electric current that I had talked about? It allows this energy to move and that energy is connected to your spirit. When you have this life force energy, um, you feel alive and you're spirited you have energy, you've got that spark inside you, the motivation, the energy to do what you really love to do. And it puts you into that zone, it puts you into that state. It also raises your energy, raises your consciousness. When you're relaxed, increases your vibration. So these are the benefits. You also feel more lighthearted, easygoing, go with the flow. <laughs> it's just life feels easier when you're relaxed. It's like being on vacation. You know how you are when you're on vacation. Everything just flows. You're not holding on to anything. There's no agenda that's there. You just open and things come together by themselves. And you begin to tap into this kind of deeper flow in life, what some people might refer to as the Tao the middle way, and you begin to notice synchronicities, things starting to come together more easily in your life. So why do we start meditation with the practice of relaxation? Well, like I said, there are so many benefits to relaxation, but oftentimes when people start meditation, like I did, I started with a lot of tension um, mental tension, physical tension, um, emotional tension. I was really disconnected from my emotions. And it's really easy to get lost in all the thoughts in your head and to start meditating from that place where you're just thinking. And a lot of people do that today. They, they say that they're meditating, but really they're just sitting and thinking. And so how do you take your that practice of sitting there to actually um, elevating that experience and making it a conducive spiritual experience for yourself and not get lost in your thoughts and just be like this and really tense inside. Think of relaxation as tending. It's tending to your inner space, starting with the intention to be calm. So if you had two rooms to meditate in, because we're tending to the inner space. Would you meditate in a dirty, messy room? Or would you want to meditate in a serene, peaceful, clean room? I think most of us would want to meditate in the clean room. So think of, think of it that way, that you're just clearing and cleaning your inner space with the practice of relaxation, which really allows you to start with calm, but you're tending first to the inner sanctuary so you don't have to sit in all that tension and anxiety and thoughts and knots. But you can start feeling opened up, feeling receptive, connecting yourself to the earth's energy and starting from that place. It's really about setting the energy to your meditation practice. That this is the energy I would like to sit in. I'm choosing to sit in the clean and peaceful room. Now, that doesn't mean that a lot of stuff is not going to come up in your meditation. 
because meditation can actually be quite a raw and messy experience with a lot of emotional release and healing that can happen. But when you start in an open place, it allows that energy to move more easily. So if you do have stuck emotions, if you do have feelings that you haven't processed from three days ago with your brother-in-law, you know, these types of experiences, those experiences might start percolating up in your meditation because they're, they're held, they haven't been experienced, and now they're ready to be released by just sitting there. So what happens is when we're just in a, a space within ourselves, the things that we haven't fully looked at or processed, the, they're likely to start coming up in meditation. That's why it's so important to have a meditation guide, someone with you to have support as well as you're developing your practice. I'd like to begin closing this webinar by sharing um, the ways that we can engage and really um, develop our skill of relaxation. So these are seven ways. There's more ways than this. Um, a, another great way is by being creative. That helps promote relaxation because you have to let go in that process generally. Um, but breathing, you know, that's what we did the first day was we focused on our breath and we intentionally slowed down the rate of our breath. And when you do that, you're just use, doing it gently. You're not trying to force your breath into anything. You're just gently inviting the breath to slow down, you know, doing the best that we can with that. Visualization is a practice that promotes healing and relaxation in the physical body. Having body awareness, noticing where we're holding tension unconsciously in our body, where we might have emotions stuck in parts of our body that we haven't fully released or felt. Um, emotional awareness, when we are connected to our emotions, it allows us to feel more free just by being connected to our emotions, no matter if they're good or bad, light or dark. Um, challenging this or that, just having that emotional awareness is so vital. And oftentimes anxiety is a symptom of not allowing yourself to feel deeper emotions because you're just trying to push it down, that resistance. Um, mental awareness, um, just noticing our thoughts, the quality of our thoughts and how they cause us to feel tense. If we're thinking about something really stressful, we tend to tense up, right? We feel contracted. And getting out into nature is so important. Um, we are nature. And when we put our body on the earth, we allow ourselves to feel grounded, to receive the energy, so much nourishing, healing energy from the earth that we can receive. We feel so much more balanced and clear. Um, and then, of course, exercise, being willing to move every day and really use your body and exercise helps to move energy as well. Um, if you want to engage in more exercise, more movement, we are now partnering with Black Coral Yoga, which is a local yoga studio here on the North Shore of Kauai. So I encourage you to go to their site and you can engage in any of their virtual classes and it's all by donation. And of course, we really appreciate local support as well. If you need more support, you can join our Facebook group. It's called Flow Live. And there we have teachers teaching three times a week. Um, and we're all teaching relaxation this week as the theme. Um, we have over 700 members in this Flow Live group. So you're welcome to join. And Chella will go ahead and put the link there in the chat box. Thank you so much for joining for today's presentation. I hope you learned about the life-changing benefits of relaxation, how amazing it is to practice this alongside of meditation. And I'd love to open the space up now for your questions.